It's time to tune, so let's get those mass airflow sensors dialed in. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are going to tune the mass airflow sensor. And I know what you might be thinking, hey, we've already done that. Well, we have, but if you caught my speed density tuning video, which is up there, I'll put a link in the corner, you'll know that that one was really long, like 40 minutes. And I thought to myself, I want to change the format a little bit and the MAF airflow sensor is a great uh, series to do that over. And so the new format is going to be we are going to have multiple videos. We're going to have a video like this one that just gets down to the nitty gritty right away, goes through all the steps to tune, and that's it. Then there will be supplemental videos that follow afterwards that kind of explain the fundamentals of the different fueling systems. And so after this one's done, look for, you know, the description of what uh, MAF tuning is and how the MAF system works and how it relates with the other systems. But for now, this video is just strictly going to be the tuning video. I'm going to try and get all this data compressed down as small as possible uh, so you have a quick reference to come back to. And then let me know down in the comments if you like this condensed version better with the multiple videos or if you like the everything in one like the speed density video that I linked earlier. But for now, let's hit up the disclaimer and then let's jump in the truck and start tuning. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, you should have saved and as found and that's a file that you want to download from your system that has your current configuration on there. And then after that we'll go in and do a save as. And we're going to save that as math step one. I've already got one. I'm going to go ahead and and uh, overwrite that one. And then in the background, we're gonna have a, a text document that documents what all changes that we're gonna make. So we'll start in the, the uh, engine tab here. And if fuel saving is, if you've got disable on demand on, go ahead and let's turn that off. Then we'll go over to the DFCO, which is the deceleration fuel cutoff. And we want to make it where this will not work. So basically we've got two parameters here. The enable says that above this engine speed, DFCO will be allowed, so let's max that out. We'll take it up to 8100. And then on the disable, it says below this engine speed, DFCO will be disabled. So we'll take that one up to uh, 8099. So that should disable both of them. If you have a uh, standard, you may need to do the clutch fuel cutoff also. Uh, so it's in this section. Next we'll go into engine fuel temperature control. So we'll document this one. Uh, engine fuel temp control, uh, turn off COT, and that's catalyst over temp. That just dumps extra fuel in there. So we want to disable that during this. Then next we'll go into open, loose, open loop and uh, base fueling here. Actually, no, it's an oxygen sensor, sorry. I always get that one mixed up because we're disabling open loop. And on here, it'll be the O2 a readiness voltage. We're gonna put a negative in there to make that negative seven, whatever your value is. That will disable the O2 sensors from controlling fueling. So let's go ahead and label that one also. Engine fuel, uh, can't spell today. Oxy sensors, O2 readiness. After that, we want to go into our uh, airflow, speed density. Actually, we'll go into dynamic to disable it on here. So, engine airflow dynamic. And we're going to disable dynamic air, which is our speed density basically. So we should have a disable, and if you read here it says uh, above this RPM use filtered mass, air mass, filtered MAF air mass. So we want to take this all the way down. So we'll take it down to 100, then we'll drop this one down to 99. Should be good there. Kind of double check everything else, make sure that we don't need to change any of that. Next, we want to go in on our spark. Let's 
go into our advance and then our base table. Spark, advance, uh, subtract five. And then we're going to take five degrees out of our base tables uh, to make sure that we don't get any engine knock that will cause us issues while we're tuning. So we put negative five up in here, hit the add button, that subtracts five from the whole grid. Same ordeal, we'll do it on these other ones. Select the whole thing, negative five plus negative five. We've got to add it because there's no subtraction option, so we're adding minus five. Okay, we can go ahead and save that one now. That's our step one. Before we load this one in, we need to set up our histogram over in our scanner. So, to do that, let's go to where we're actually looking at our math frequency. It's underneath engine, airflow, and general, for the most part, and you may have two of these frequency tables. Mine is only using one. tables are the same you may have a table that is split into two so if you have one that you'll have a low side table and a high side table if you have two that are the same or you only have one we will be tuning them uh, kind of the same I do not have to worry about airflow two if you have two you will know but for now we want to come in here and uh, if we click mass airflow frequency up here because we'll be tuning in Hertz, it'll, well, should pop open a copy columns, but we can come over here to the column axis and then do copy labels. Now we wanna switch back over to our scanner and I've got the, uh, the PIDs, just the default PIDs for my vehicle loaded up, which means I need to add a couple. I have equivalence ratio commanded. That's an important one. On top of that, we wanna have the mass airflow sensor. Well, you say I've already got one in there, that's in pounds per minute. We tune in hertz on this thing. So let's go ahead and add a channel. If we use the text filter, I can type math in there and see the frequency one. That's the one that I wanna add. And then I also need to add my EQ ratio off of my wideband. So I'm having to use the AEM We'll toss that one in there. That should be good. Now what we need to do is set up some math. We need to have an EQ error ratio. If you are using a uh, MVP IQ Pro or the two that has the input directly on it, you can come into the Lambda and AFR and use the existing one. Uh, before we do, well actually let's do this because we'll have to come back and do another step if not, but we want to copy this math and I'll show you why. Go ahead and highlight that, then hit the control C for copy. And then we'll come down here and do user math. And on the expression, we can hit control V and copy that over. And we're gonna name this one EQ error ratio. We can leave it in percent, but what we wanna do is our EQ ratio sensor, we wanna change that one to our mass airflow. So right now, that's this sensor right here. We can edit this variable and choose to come down here to your serial input if you're using a serial input or if you're using the pro or the mpvi2 you can use it underneath there if it prompts you for that just go ahead and say yes it's good hit okay now we have a new math ratio or a new math filter that we can use close this out and then we want to go back into the graphs or go into the graphs layout here and add a new graph new table and our parameter is going to be that math parameter we just created. So go all the way down to the bottom, you'll have maths and then user defined. If you expand those out, you'll see your EQ error ratio. It's in percent. We're gonna go ahead and add two decimal places on there to get a little more, a little more fun on there. And then on cell hits, we wanna start out with five. This is how many hits it requires before it registers as a good data hit. To initially start off, I like to go with five and then I'll expand that out to 10 as I start uh, dialing it in closer and closer. On our column axis, since we had to copy that other thing, let's come back over here and copy our column axis out of our editor again. So we do column axis, copy labels, and then on parameter for column, 
let's do math and we want the frequency that prompts you with this generic sensor go ahead and say yes it sounds good and then on values hit control V or right click to paste it now we can save this so save the selected graph uh, math table dot table whatever and then we can rename it if we want to also math probably should have done that math error is what we'll call it we want to make sure that the view is an average so if we do a min or max or any of these other things it won't allow us to tune properly so we'll save this again as fair okay now we should be good to go let's go ahead and download I'm going to skip over that you're not going to see that portion and then I will be right back to start tuning so go ahead and download now okay so you just got done downloading it we connect up our scanner and we start logging sometimes you will notice that uh, your EQ ratio has the decimal point moved over one location at least that's the way it works on the AEMs I'll show you how to fix that let's go ahead and stop scanning and if we come in here and we do transform we can come down to user define and on that we want to go ahead and select our parameter our oxygen sensor and we're doing equivalence ratio and then select your model mine's the 4110 it'll say let's do the generic say yes that sounds good well then we want to take input and divide it by 10. That'll move our decimal place over. You'll see that we have a new calculation there. If we start scanning, now we've got a good reading. That matches my gauge. We'll come in here, and as you can see, we're running a little bit high. That means that we are actually running lean right now. That matches up by our decimal point, point 14. So, uh, I want to make this rich before I start tuning. We're at 14%. I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and add 15% fuel, and I'll show you how. Let's go back over to our editor. We've got our uh, table selected here. Our mass airflow is open. I want to add 15%, so I'm going to add 1.15 up in the block and multiply. Boom, that bumps everything by 15%. Close that out, and let's go ahead and save that as step three, or step two, I should say, sorry download it once again whenever we download we do not need to write the TCM calibration just write the engine calibration okay let's fire it back up flip back over the scanner let's connect it see how we're looking now should be running rich hopefully make sure and give your uh, AFR gauge your wideband gauge time to warm up before you start scanning because you don't want to get false values in there Okay, we're running rich. Let's go do a data log. Remember, whenever we data log, we do smooth transitions. We want to try and hit as many cells as possible without having abrupt changes. Abrupt changes will create false data in our log. We want to try and get as high on here as possible. So a lot of this is going to require slow, wide open throttle runs up to full boost, things like that. If you exceed your math sensor, let me know. That's something else that we will touch in on some of the later videos. But I'm going to log real quick. This will be fast forwarded for time. Okay, so the nice thing about doing math tuning is is that uh, you don't have to log nearly as much as you do with speed density. So I went out, did some pulls, and it uh, looks like we got some decent range. We're not going to get too high up the curve right now just because I'm not in an area where I can go wide open throttle for the most part. But this will give you an idea. So let's go ahead and stop scanning. We want to come over here and select the whole table. Right click and choose copy. We can go ahead and disconnect for now from the scanner and turn the vehicle off. And let's flip back over to the editor and open up our math table. As I said, if your math table is broken up into two sets, you can actually build two histograms for each table. Just follow the instructions for the first one. But select everything, and then we want to paste special, multiply by half. We want to do incremental steps as we tune this thing out. Now you can see your changes. 
kind of glance through there. If you don't have your graph open beneath there, your 2D chart, make sure and open it. Uh, if you're only looking at that, it's all right. But if you do the split view like this with the 2D chart, you can see if you get any wonky data values in there. So say we've got this one that's a little bit off. Let me get it highlighted again here. 8400. So if I come up here to 8400, I can do something. I can smooth it. And if you watch down in the graph, it's going to smooth out. Boom. Now, if you see something like this, you know you have an issue. There's even times you might see something like this. You know you have an issue. So come in here, smooth those out before you go any further. This isn't too bad. It's a little bit rough, but that's, that's nothing to be concerned about. It's a fairly linear curve. Don't do that, good Lord. Let's undo that. Okay, we can close this. We'll save this as step three. And then let's load it in and get back to tuning. So I will be right back. Okay, now comes the boring part, the rinse and repeat. We are gonna do the same thing over again. Let's fire it up, go back to the scanner, connect up. Once again, make sure that your uh, AFR gauge is warmed up before you start logging. You don't wanna get a bad value in there. And then start scanning. We should be a little bit closer. We were running about six or seven. Now we're down to five. Instead, we're doing half steps. And so it takes a few scans to get in there. It's gonna get a little bit smaller. We're looking to get that within 1%. Basically, that means that you want your whole chart to be negative one to one whenever you're scanning. That means you've got your math dialed in. So let's do another log here real quick and we will do some more changes. Stick around as I fast forward once again. Okay, here we are. We've got another log. Let's go ahead and save this. We can turn the vehicle off. And we want to copy the whole thing again. So just click in that corner and let's do copy. We'll jump back over to our editor. Same ordeal. Open up our map table. And we will paste special, multiply by half. And this is repetitive. We do this over and over again until we get this dialed in. As I said, whenever you get to the point where your scanner shows all of these kind of being within one, plus or minus, that means you're pretty dialed in. If you look up in this area, 4350 and up, that's pretty spot on. Those numbers are very good. You're not gonna improve on those. You know, that's, that's just, you're gonna get within the error ratio. We're getting even closer there, but we still have some cleaning up that we can do down here in the bottom where we've got the fours and negative sevens. So it's just a repetitive task. But now that that's done, let's say that we've done this five or six more times and the whole thing is within one. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we're gonna save this as our final step. And we'll say math final. And then let's open up our compare file. So we'll open up our as found and go back to our document that we documented everything down. So we disabled DFCO, that's under engine fuel cutoff. We wanna add that back in and we can use this option here to show what it was. It was 980 and 875, so let's change that back. 980, 875. Okay, next we wanna look at Engine temp, temperature control, turn off COT. If you don't have cats in your car, you can leave that disabled. If you do have cats, you want to put that back in. It'll keep them from burning out. After that, we're on O2 readiness. That was an easy one. Uh, oxygen sensors, we added a negative. So let's take, take the negative sign off of there. And then disable dynamic airflow. So airflow, dynamic, same ordeal. If we come in here and look, we were at 4,300. So let's put those back. Uh, now is a good time to go over to and watch my speed density video. If you need to tune your speed density, I'll show you how to force everything into speed density. 
And then last but not least, we have Spark. We've got five subtracted. If you're going to be tuning Spark or you're going to be tuning your speed density next, you can leave those as is because whenever I get the Spark video out, we will be adjusting these base tables. So I'm going to leave those as is. Go ahead, save it, or save it because this is our final and load this one in. So let's jump out for the summary and we will go from there. So that's it, math tuning. Easy, right? Yeah, it is a repetitive process. It takes a while, but it is easy, unlike speed density, which is a little bit more in-depth. Once again, throwing the link up there to the speed density video. It's a long one. It's a lot to digest. Uh, and hopefully you like this format better where all the information is kind of just compressed down and is strictly on tuning. But if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down in the corner because there's going to be supplemental videos for math tuning that explains some of this helps to uh, kind of break down what's going on so you better understand the process as a whole. On top of that, there's going to be videos about timing, torque tuning, transmission tuning, all that stuff coming out, along with some other videos, uh, so you don't want to miss out. Uh, if you like this new format, make sure and hit me up in the comments, let me know. Throw a thumbs up my way if you want to, I'd appreciate it. If not, you can hit the thumbs down. If you don't like it, not going to hurt my feelings, but I ask if you do hit the thumbs up, or the thumbs down, I should say, leave a comment, tell me what I could do better. I'm trying to make this content for you guys who want to learn how to tune out there. So hopefully you found this information uh, you know, useful. Uh, and if so, I will keep on pumping this stuff out. And hopefully you like the new shortened uh, to the point format. So uh, once again, I want to thank you for stopping by the garage and stay tuned for more content.